Spend a day around the South Coast and you'll likely be exposed to history. From downtown Santa Barbara's El Presidio and the Stowe House in Goleta to Chumash Relics and Mission Santa Barbara. But there is another type of local history that many residents may not be aware of. The kind of history that comes not from a place, but from people. And an annual event is doing what it can to make sure that this history, these people, are never forgotten. I'd like to especially welcome our four Bomber Boys. We're so proud of you. These four men are a piece of history. They were honored by the Pierre Clayson's Veteran Museum and the Channel City Club so that those who serve aren't quickly forgotten. It's a feeling of, uh, of doing something good for the community because we, we need to recognize people who go put their lives on the line for all of us. To get to know these four Santa Barbara veterans is to learn about four young men who all stood behind the same cause and then had it forever change their lives. For Lieutenant Larry Crandell, who went on to fly 35 missions, joining the Army Air Corps was a defining moment in his life. I was either going to be drafted or try to be in the Air Corps. I became a bombardier navigator, which meant I became an officer. And that was a single act that most defined me. When they put the, silver, the gold bars and the wings on me, when I got out of the service, I went to college, I became a college graduate. Colonel James Petillo dropped out of college at the age of 19 in order to join the Army Air Corps and then retired after 20 years of service. For Colonel Petillo, this event gave him the opportunity to share his stories about those who served with him. I enjoyed talking about some of the great friends we made in the Army Air Corps because they're just there just seems that um, there were some of the greatest people in the world. And um, I wouldn't have missed it for anything in the world. Staff Sergeant Jack Patterson entered the service in 1943 as an aviation cadet with hopes of being a pilot. But with no need for them at the time, he instead went on to become a gunner on B-24, B-25, and B-17 planes, flying 30 missions before returning home in 1945. The ones of us who did fly, we were all volunteers. We had a pretty good idea of what might happen to us. And from my standpoint, it, it, I feel it was an, an honor to be a part of that. Shortly after Pearl Harbor, Bob Scott joined the Army Air Corps, eventually becoming a second lieutenant and flying 30 missions with the 492nd Bomb Group in England. I think it's a good thing to make people aware of what went on at a time when uh, this country was, was united, totally united after Pearl Harbor. We were one people. I don't think it's ever been like that since. I doubt if it ever was before. These Army Air Corps men inspire great pride with their incredible contribution to the Great War, surviving against odds that seem to say them being here today is nothing short of a miracle. The stories they have shared with us today are an important contribution to our nation's oral history. And hearing you today really makes me very proud to be an American, and thank you so much for your service and for sharing your stories with us today. While the United States suffered many losses during World War II, those in the Army Air Corps, or Bomber Boys as we call them now, lost their lives most frequently due to the highly dangerous nature of their job. In World War II, out of every thousand Army troops, 24 were killed in combat. Out of every 1,000 Marines, 29 were killed in combat. Out of every 1,000 Army Air Corps, 240 were killed in combat. The bomber stayed at altitude and stayed on heading, so the flak and the fighters just uh, were able to decimate many, many of them. The Germans set up a terrific system where if you flew into a box of the sky 
and they knew the altitude, so they would put all their guns into that one box, and boy, it was really something. Your life expectancy was seven missions, so you were supposed to do 25, but your life expectancy was seven. They were the real heroes, the ones that came up day after day as human targets for every weapon of an ingenious, dedicated, and tenacious enemy could use against them. So in life itself, the true measure of courage is to fly on despite the tragedies of accident, sickness, and failure. And fly on, these four men did. Through sharing their very personal stories with the crowd, the audience got a glimpse of the life that was a World War II bomber boy. That meant there was a B-29 up there in the smoke, and the lights were all instructed at that point of the war to concentrate on one airplane, and every gun in town had one target, and that was it. Well, <laughs> it was perhaps 20 or so minutes, and lo and behold, we arrived at the beginning of the bomb run. Now, there were as many B-29s up there, each with a crew of 11 men, as there are people, you, us, we, sitting here in this room today. But of the original 70 planes and crews after those 89 days, all but 16, all but 16 of 70 had gone down over Germany. That we weren't going to make it back to the base. So I asked what I thought was an intelligent question. What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> and he answered, I'll leave out the profanity. We're going to take the airplane and I'm going to put it as gently as possible into the Adriatic Sea. I immediately felt better, and that good feeling continued until the plane hit the water at 100 miles an hour. I, I'm a survivor, I'm not a hero, and I'm a very lucky boy, and I'm very happy to be here. In many ways, the opportunity to share their stories is a gift to the veterans, while for those with the chance to listen, the honor was all theirs. They feel the admiration and the recognition and the, the respect that we pay them. Uh, that's really important for them. You got to understand they're all 90 years old. They're at the end of their uh, lives and they're wondering, this is really an important thing for them. A quote by Pierre Clayton's, the benefactor of the future Pierre Clayton's Veteran Museum and Library, eloquently sums up the inspiration for both the museum and this event. To die in war is not the worst. To be, uh, be missing in the war is not the worst. To be forgotten is the worst. And that's our important thing with us, is trying to do things to bring recognition to these men. And uh, then we'll be the Koreans, and then Korean veterans, and then we'll be Vietnam. All the people that serve this country. So uh, we can't forget about it. With the support of local organizations, these men and the others who served will never face that fate.